I'm t and welcome to Let's Learn C++. Today I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can follow along with whatever IDE you like. Check out the description below for links to previous tutorials or playlists if any topic is unfamiliar. All right, so override. When you ride your tricycle and the wheels deflate and fall off, you are overriding the trike or tricycle. <laughs> If you are on a horse and that is riding another horse, you are also overriding. <laughs> okay, these are terrible jokes. In the last tutorial, we saw how the keyword virtual would be used to create inheriting functions that would override base class functions. But it wasn't entirely clear that we were overriding it properly unless the base class function was purely virtual. This is where the keyword override comes in. Override is used to write over or override a virtual base class function or method and acts as a safeguard to prevent accidentally creating a new function. Previously, I said adding virtual to a subclass, aka a derived member function could do this task, but override does the same thing and will create a compiler error if used improperly. This makes override a far better choice. It can only be added to functions that are already virtual in the base class. All right, so let's see an instance of it in action. Up top is our same old importing setup code. Then we have our my base class created right here. And we just have a virtual print function that just prints out C1. Then below that, we have my derived class or my subclass that inherits from the base class we just created. And now we don't have a virtual in the front of it. Instead, we have the keyword override added after the parentheses of the function, but before the curly braces or code block of the function. So it's added right in between where we had previously added the const to designate that the function itself was constant and not changing any variables within the class. And again, we see another instance of that below with our second override. What I'm going to do is down below in the main function, we're going to create an instance of the second derived class and just call print. So it'll print one if it's in the base class, two if it's in the derived class, or three if it's in the second derived class. All right, so let's go ahead and run the program. And we see that three is being output right here. Perfect. So that means that this override function is working properly. It's overriding the previous instances of this function. So if we were to comment this out, coming out our second derived implementation, what do you think would happen? Well, it'll print out two. That is because that is our second one. Cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment that out and I'm gonna comment out the base class print function and let's look at what happens. Now I'm not actually going to run the program because what happens is it, once I click save, it will actually create two compiling errors saying that member function declared with override does not override a base class member. That is because we do not have a base virtual function being implemented since we commented that out. Cool. So this is extremely useful when creating overriding functions because it will demand that the virtual function be named the same in the base class and also be virtual. If we were to just create that function and not create virtual, it would still give us compiling errors saying that there's no virtual base class function. So if you have somebody else working on the base class implementation and you're working on the derived class, this is an excellent safeguard to prevent weird errors like class method of prints to be virtual. Awesome. Also note that if we add on virtual in the front of it, it doesn't actually do anything. If we save and run our code, it still does the exact same thing as before. Adding virtual here does nothing. Override acts as adding virtual and overriding. So it is, it's kind of a two for one there. Also note that if you do need to add const to a function, what we can do is we can add it here, const into our base class right here, and then we can add const down below. If we do not include const in every instance, then it'll be like, I don't know what function I'm actually overriding anymore. So make sure to include const before override every time and make sure that there, there's consistency. Again, const is a good way to signify to other programmers that, hey, I'm not actually changing any of the member variables within this function. And also note that you must have const if you're overriding any functions in the base class and all subclass or derived class implementations. All right, so I'm gonna remove those real quick. And now I'd like to tell you about override final. Uh, final is a keyword that you can add after the keyword override. And it's basically saying, 
that I am going to be the final override, that there can be no other overrides to this current one. So what we can do is add it right here and notice what happens. I'm gonna save that out and then we get a compiling error says cannot override final function my derived prints declared in line 12. So it cannot override this one right here because this final says don't ever override me, I'm the last one. And so that's why it raises this error. So it's kind of like with your parents telling you something that you can't have a unicorn frappuccino today and that's final. That's what that's saying. All right, thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Challenge your skills at hackerrank.com. I encourage you. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters and as always, like, subscribe and keep the dream alive. <laughs>